This is the lead time 48 volt 5000 watt inverter. It this in its current setup is 120 volts, but it is capable of outputting 240 volt split phase if you have two of these connected together. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a stress test on just one unit to see if we can get close to that 5000 watts of output for an X amount of time. And then we'll determine if this might be a good option for your setup or not. And I wanna be upfront with you guys from the very beginning of this video, this is not a full on review of the 48 volt 5,000 watt inverter. This is a stress test or a load test to make sure that this inverter can do and perform like it says it can. If you're looking for a full on review of this, let me know in the description below that you're interested in seeing that and I'll put something together because this, I will show a basic demonstration of how I have this wired and then we'll get right into the load testing. And let me be clear, this is not a sponsored video. Lead Time has not even asked me to do a video on this inverter. This is my honest review of the 48 volt 5,000 watt inverter. And please bear with me, this is a testing environment. The back panel is not appropriate. The wiring all exposed like this is not appropriate. We are just doing a load test on this today to make sure that this inverter can perform like it's supposed to. Here are the circuits that we'll be using for the load test. We have lights, we got plugs. This mini split is gonna be active. It's this 20 amp right here. So that's what's gonna give us the capability of really trying to put this over the top. We have our office plugs, we got coffee makers, we got all kinds of things running, refrigerators, but it's these eight circuits right here that we're gonna focus on. I have turned off the 240 volt circuits because this cannot power those with just one single unit. And we're gonna take this from grid. Right now we're on a utility supply. We're gonna switch this over from on to off. And when that happens, it's going to take it to generator supply, which is what the inverter is acting as. So let's do that right now. Now we are currently running off the inverter. And let's see if we can get some information here. So let's leave it right there. We're running, what, 440 watts. That's basically what's running in here constantly. So I'm gonna go turn on all the circuits and get this as close as possible to that 5,000 watts. This is an 85 inch television, so it does consume a little bit of power. And the old refrigerator is on. There's nothing in the freezer, but it's on as well. And we're currently right around the 800 watt range. By turning on the mini split in the heat mode, we're gonna drastically increase the consumption. And to push it even further, we're gonna turn on a heat gun and we'll make sure to turn the fan on high. Now we're up to 3.2 kilowatts. We may have to add a second heat gun to get us right at 5,000 watts. Of course, on a different circuit, because we don't wanna overload the circuits. Turn this up to 1500 watts or as far as it'll go. It might be 13 on this one. And we have the fan on high. Perfect. We're right at 5,000 watts. We're at 4.8, 4.9 kilowatts. And I did overload the system. I ran it a little too hard. It was going a little bit over 5,000 watts as it was kind of going up and down. Let's see if this will turn back on itself. We do have normal, we've got a flash over there. Oh, it automatically turns back on, which is very nice. So let's continue our test at a little bit below the 5,000 mark so it's not going above it at any point. So it may have to be around 46 to 4,800 watts, but that'll give us a good indication whether this is gonna hold up to this stress test. And I definitely got this thing under some stress because we're at 4.7, 4.6, 4.7 on the kilowatts that we're using. That's very close to the 5,000 watts. I don't wanna go much over that because I think I have some things that may kick on that would put us over this and it wouldn't be fair to say that it kicked off because that's what happened earlier. So we'll run this right at, you can see this 4.8 now. I've been running this for a very long time 
and it's doing a great job of being able to maintain that. So let's get some uh, sound meters on this to see what type of sound pollution that the inverter puts out and see if that is within range. Under a max load, it's running around 60 decibels, 61. That's me talking, it's going up. So I'll be quiet for a second. And overall, I'm very impressed with the inverter. It did uh, maintain the output that it says it can do for a continuous amount of time. I love testing in that environment and doing stress tests. Not everybody agrees with me on that, but if you say that you have a, an output of a continuous X watts, then I wanna make sure that that inverter or that power station or that system can perform at that level. Now, in this scenario, we have a third party brand battery that's connected to the inverter. And this battery has a continuous output of 100 amps and it has a surge up to 200 amps. But when I seen this actually shut down, I thought the inverter was actually shutting down. But it turns out it was the battery BMS that was protecting the battery from being damaged over that current that it says it can actually do. So I then ran my test closer to 100 amps of max output not exceeding that whatsoever and this actually never did shut down if i exceeded that 100 amps out of the battery for an x amount of time then the inverter would shut down so this inverter actually can do a continuous output of the 5000 watts i did that very close to 5000 watts for a long period of time and i had absolutely no problem although the battery was going over 100 amps for a short amount of time there. I just tried to regulate it so we didn't have any failures from the battery to the inverter and I would blame it on the inverter. So that's just kind of an explanation of how this testing went. I'm very impressed with the output of this inverter.